Home ownership and home insurance are very difficult things for people right now. We're gonna talk about how many people in this country actually own their own home. It's far fewer than you actually think. And we are gonna talk about what's best, insuring your home or not insuring your home. Let's talk about what's going on with our small modest house out here in the country and some ignorant comments that I've received recently on another video. Let's talk about it. So can you realistically afford to own your own home outright and avoid insurance? Avoid these scam insurance companies that are just dropping people over the, all over the place, leaving them hanging, not paying claims, etc. It is actually very, very difficult in today's world to be able to do that. So there has been a knee-jerk reaction to insurance companies dropping people's coverage and the solution for that. There's a very vocal minority that says, oh, we'll just pay off your house and you're good to go. Just drop your coverage. Or to drop everything you have and just go build a small cabin in the woods that you don't have to insure. The number of people who can actually do that is minuscule. Now I know some people on my last video commented that they have. I am so happy for you. That is amazing. If you have been able to do that, more power to you. But for the majority of Americans, they can't even get close to that. Is it their own fault? Potentially a small bit of it. But economic factors and new laws are what is killing people. Inflation is destroying people. But there is still a small vocal minority who lives inside of their own bubble who can't understand what's going on with the rest of the country. And they piped up on my last video. And there were also a few comments that I had filtered out for profanity that wanted everyone to turn violently against insurance company executives and insurance agents. That's outrageous and ridiculous. And I got called the P word because I wasn't willing to do that. Well, nobody's gonna goad me into violence because violence isn't the answer for this type of situation. Let me lay out some facts for people about home ownership in our country and some economic facts. Number one, the number of people who own their own home outright in the United States right now is 35 million. Of those 35 million, way over half are baby boomers. People my age, I am 51, only 12% of people my age own their own home outright, and the rest fall throughout other age categories. In this country, 109 million people rent. That's 32% of the population. That translates into 45 million households. The number of renters is higher than the number of outright owners. Everybody else in the middle has a mortgage on a home. And I did want to mention that only 5% of people under the age of 34 outright own their own home. And again, as I stated before, does anybody actually own their own property because we still pay property taxes to rent it from the government? But that's beside the point. So if you subtract those 109 million people from the actual population of 350 and then divide it by the 35 million outright homeowners in the United States, that's only 1.47% of the population outright owns their own home. I guarantee most of you don't. But again, I'm stoked for those of you who do. But for those who do and think everybody else should be in the same situation you are, get out of your bubble. People can't afford it. Talking about affordability, the average household in the United States has $109,000 worth of debt. Some of that's mortgage debt, yes, but it's a lot of other things. And that jumps even higher when you get to my generation, Gen X. It's $159,000 per household. Did you know the average savings for people is $62,000? And that includes savings, checking, money market, and some other types of things. Only 12% of people have more than $10,000 saved. That is a tiny fraction of money. That's one car repair away nowadays from being completely bankrupt and living paycheck to paycheck. And the small minority wants people to go out, find land, build their own small cabin so they can avoid house insurance? Come on. Did you know this last week, mortgage refinancing surged 40%. Okay, let's talk about the comment about downsizing your home. We downsized our house. 
That is a possibility. We lived in Houston. Our house was about 2,300 square feet. This house out here in the country now is 1,700 square feet. We downsized, but obviously have a much bigger property than in Houston proper. But there aren't many houses like this anymore, this small type of house. There aren't any houses anymore like my grandparents, which was 800 square feet in Downriver, Detroit. It was built in the 40s. Those houses do exist still in the city though, but they are not in great condition. So downsizing to homes that size, which don't really exist much anymore, is really kind of out of the question. In the 40s, the average size home was about 800 square feet. In the 80s, the average home was 1,700 square feet. Just this last year, the average home size in square footage actually came down a little bit to 2,300 square feet. But the cost to build a home like that and the cost to buy a home like that is astronomical. The median home price in the United States right now is $412,000. The house in Houston that we bought 10 years ago was $136,000. Today, it's selling for $350,000. Nobody has that kind of cash. Nobody can buy a house outright and own it outright anymore to avoid insurance. There's bad laws on the books pertaining to that, but I don't blame some insurance companies because they are insuring a product that's just skyrocketing in value. And to rebuild that same product, yeah, it's gonna cost way more money. So yeah, insurance costs are going up. And that's mostly due to inflation. Housing inflation is the worst. It's absolutely out of control. 10 years ago, we paid 136,000 for this. Today, we could sell it for 350. All while at the same time, the median salary in the United States is $66,000. Do the math. You can barely afford to get a mortgage on a house earning that much for the price of what houses cost. Let's go to the other comments. Okay, well buy some land and build yourself a small cabin. Cool. Do you know how much land prices are? You got a clue? Does your job give you the ability to be able to go out in an area that is remote where you're gonna find the cheapest land and spend the time to build your own house if you are a 73 year old female? No. Can you get friends to help you? Yeah, maybe. How about if you are a male who's 60 years old and in poor health? Can you do that? No. Do you have the savings to do that? No. Do you still have to work? Maybe. How about if you're a young person, maybe in their 30s, and you work remotely? Could you do that? That is possible. But finding that land is extremely difficult. There's an awesome website called landsearch.com. You should check it out. I spent a lot of time yesterday on that website looking for inexpensive land. And I looked in the state of Texas and also in Arkansas because we're not far from there. The average that I could find was $4,500, not a lot of money, for a fourth of an acre. You cannot start a self-sustaining homestead on a quarter acre. You can try if you're by yourself. If you have a family and you need to feed them, that's gonna be extremely difficult. I wrote an article on our website a few years back about the minimum amount of land you need to be able to feed a family of four. With all the infrastructure you need, with all the land for livestock, for gardening and farming, all that, and the minimum is two acres. We can discuss that in the comment section below if you want to, but that is really the minimum. You know, a lot of people think that land in West Texas is less expensive. Well, I jumped out there and looked on the map and guess what I found? 30 grand for two acres. Not bad for some of us, but do you have that amount of cash to put down on the land and then to build your own cabin? There is a tiny, tiny fraction of people out there that can do that. You know, somebody accused me of not offering solutions also and just highlighting the problem. Well, you certainly need to highlight the problem before you offer solutions. So let's talk about that. There is a total dollar devaluation right now, but what do we see skyrocketing? Precious metals. Maybe you could invest in those. The stock market is still up, so maybe it's a time in the short period to invest in something there. Bitcoin, I'm not into it personally. I never really investigated it, but some people have and made a decent amount of money. I was accused by drive-by commenters of not paying down debt. Well, if anybody's watched my channel for the 10 years I've been on YouTube, you know that in most videos, I propose paying down your debt. I've done specific 
dedicated videos to paying off your debt. I will promote that here today. If we want to move forward, if we want to have a solution to things, people need to pay off their debt first. Now that doesn't mean the current mortgage that you have, because you could downsize and move out in that way. If you can find some place that you can downsize to, as I specified before. If that's building a house, awesome. If that's building a tiny house or putting a tiny house on a property, great. But you need to have cash in hand to outright own that and put in all the infrastructure for that. I want everybody to be able to do that. Don't get me wrong. This is talking about people who are in their bubble who don't understand all of that. I want people to be able to do that. I've worked hard here on YouTube and my wife's worked very hard so that we could save, 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 and pay down the mortgage on that. And now, yes, we are right on the cusp of being able to do that. After that, the insurance company will get kicked to the curb. But as for right now, right before we pay it off, I still have to deal with them because the bank still owns a fraction of my home and I cannot drop the coverage. Even for all of our hard work over time, we are still paying on the house and the property for that matter. And what people don't understand is those facts that I listed earlier about how few people own their house, about how little savings people have, about how little money make people make. Now I know a lot of them are probably drive-by commenters and potentially bot trolls. But those comments give me an opportunity to reach out to everybody else to talk about things like this. And if you appreciate me talking about things like this, click the subscribe button. And now if you're interested in rainwater reclamation on your homestead or your off-grid property, go click on this series of videos right here. Have a beautiful blessed day and we will see you next time. Bye.